Good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, this is uh, Rodrigo from Magnil Europe. Okay, welcome to our uh, webinar. Right today, we'll be uh, modeling a, a light bulb. Okay, a classic uh, incandescent light bulb. Okay, we'll be starting from uh, from scratch, just with a simple uh, reference image. Okay, and first of all, before we get started, I'll just uh, introduce myself uh, briefly. Okay. And I would like you to uh, just uh, verify if you can hear me okay, if your audio is uh, okay, and my voice is reaching you fine, okay? Right there, I can see some, some, some people already replying on the question section. That's great. Thank you guys for checking. So, uh, let's get started then, okay? My name is uh, Rodrigo Barcena, as I was telling you. I work here at Mac MacNeil Europe. I deal mostly with uh, support and training issues, okay, and I will be your uh, host today. And my colleague, uh, Verena Vogler, will be uh, dealing uh, the questions, okay, and checking if everything's okay, supporting me today, okay, right. My background is um, product design mainly, okay, I've been collaborating with a couple of studios here in uh, Barcelona in the last uh, years since I finished school, okay, and mostly I've worked with, uh, yeah, furniture and lighting uh, projects, okay, so this is pretty much my uh, my background. Uh, right, uh, as I was telling you, this is going to be the model that we'll be uh, working on uh, today, okay, and uh, before we get started, okay, this is a quick uh, overview of the go to webinar control panel that you have okay so right above uh, right on top okay you will see that uh, well all of you are muted <laughs> first of all okay because uh, we have like uh, over uh, 100 and uh, we're expecting actually some some more uh, attendees even so it's going to be quite difficult to just let you all guys uh, use your microphone so we just decided to uh, mute everyone right if you want to communicate with us you can use the questions area right below okay so if you have any questions regarding the, the presentation and so on my colleague Verena will be uh, helping me also uh, yeah with the questions right so uh, yeah actually if, if, if it's a question related to the to the to the model itself and you think that uh, all the audience might uh, benefit from it maybe you can just leave the question to the last part of the exercise, okay? At the end of exercise, I'll leave some 10 minutes, or 15 minutes, okay, for uh, questions. So if you think it's something quite uh, relevant, maybe we can just leave it to the end, okay? And uh, I'll just try to just go through all uh, unanswered questions uh, by then, okay? If it's something regarding the, 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 the quality of the audio, the quality of the presentation, if you can't uh, hear us okay, or if the video is flickering or something like that, you can, uh, you can uh, let us know uh, in real time, okay? Right there. Right, so, uh, whoops, not yet, okay. Uh, let me just go straight right here to Rhino, okay? So this is the finished uh, model that we'll be, uh, that we'll be uh, getting at the end of the exercise, right? Let me just zoom in so that you can see some of the details, okay? Maybe we can just spend some time now, a couple of minutes, just studying the, uh, let me set it to ghosted, okay? Studying, let's say, the geometry, a little bit, all the different parts that will be making up our model, okay? So we have a main uh, bulb, okay? The glass bulb that I just uh, removed right here, okay? Then on the interior, we have a central pylon, okay? Which is made of glass also, supporting to thin contacts here, okay, that carry all the electricity. Then we have the central support wires here and the main filament, okay, the main wire right there, okay. I think it's going to be quite easy to just get all this uh, part modeled, okay, the same thing goes for the glass bulb, okay. I think that the most complex part will be the thread, the thread area right here, okay? We'll be using a couple of uh, tricks, okay? Just to get this uh, modeled. That will involve creating a helix, uh, arraying some curves, that will be the sections, okay? And then just, uh, yeah, creating a sweep one rail just to get the thread done, okay? Then we have some contact here, metal contact, and a ceramic part also right here below, okay? Uh, right, so this is going to be 
what we're going to end up with. Um, just one second. Okay. Right. Right. So let me just bring this back. Okay. I'm just going to close now this uh, this file. Okay. And we'll just start with a new, completely new file. Okay. So uh, this should be what I'll be getting. Okay. If I just uh, start a new, I'm just going to hide some of these uh, some of these tabs here that I won't be using. I won't be using the environment now. I won't be using the materials now. I won't be using the sun panel, okay? So I'm just going to make myself some extra space here, okay? All right, let me just check. Uh, some of you guys say that uh, there is no video. Um, just one second. Let me just double check this. Okay, I think I know what happened. Okay, I think that you can see it okay, right? Now? Better? Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, <laughs> since, uh, yeah, there was a, a, a little uh, problem with the, with the organizers, so I think that, yeah, it should be back now. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> so as I was telling you, um, yeah, this is the model that we're going to uh, end up with, okay? And uh, I was just trying to uh, show you some of the big parts that make up the model, okay? So we have the thread, which is going to take most of our uh, modeling efforts, I guess. Then the central pylon, there you go. The filament here, that will be a helix as well. And then some of the contacts here that are just simple uh, wires, okay? So Let's get started, okay, and import our main reference image here on the on the on the Rhino working area, okay. Right, so uh, in front, I'm just going to import a picture frame, okay. So I'm just going to go and call the picture frame command here. Picture frame can be found also on the viewport menu here, and it will let us import. Uh, I think I have it here, my Google Drive webinars. Uh, June. Here it is. It's just a simple side picture, okay, bitmap from a from a bulb, okay, and it will let us import and place an image on our working space, okay. This is just a regular bitmap, as you can see there. So the main thing that we'll have to do after importing the the the, the bitmap, okay, is making sure it. It, it's it's placed okay with the right dimensions okay uh, let me just check one thing before we do that so if I go here to Google Drive I think that I had prepared a couple of uh, images with yeah the main dimensions that this thread system uh, does use okay here it is so our picture frame our image should have 27 millimeters okay from side to side here Right, so this is going to be my main, let's say, uh, dimension here, and that's the one I'm going to enforce right here. Okay, so let me just first of all create a segment with a known length of 27 millimeters. Okay, and I'm just going to create two straight lines here and here. Right, I'm going to place these then on the central area right there and uh, on the layers system I'm just going to create myself a couple of uh, auxiliary layers okay to place all the geometry and the elements that I will be importing okay so I can just create one called picture frame and I'm just going to rename the default one call it uh, auxiliary okay so I'll be placing all the extra geometry right there on auxiliary Right, and the picture frame should be right here on picture frame. So I'm just going to select the picture frame, right click here, and I'll be sending it. Change object layer. There you go. So everything's in place, right? I can lock now the auxiliary layer here just to make sure that I don't move it 
unadvertently, right? And I can place now the picture frame right here. And if I just go and scale it now, using the scale command here, for instance, or scale 2D, doesn't really matter, right? I can, there you go, scale it so that it slightly protrudes on the right side. I can then move it to the left a little bit until we are you know, getting the picture frame with the right general dimensions, okay? Later on, when I create the geometry itself, I can pay more attention to those exact dimensions, okay? But I just want to have a general quick overview of the image in the right, uh, in the right, uh, yeah, in the right side with the right uh, dimensions. Okay, so I'm just gonna get started then with another layer, call it uh, glass bulb. Okay, I'm just gonna move it down. This will be my active layer. I'm just gonna change the color a little bit so that I can see. Okay, and uh, right, uh, I'm just gonna start then with a simple control point curve. Before I create a control point curve, since everything will be symmetrical and loads of the elements that will be creating are uh, revolutions, okay, in auxiliary I'll be creating myself also an axis line that goes from the origin of coordinates, right, the tip there, all the way up. And then I can just go back to glass bulb and maybe lock again these two layers here so that I don't move or delete anything, right? So back here in the glass bulb layer, control point curve, I'm just gonna use a degree five, sorry, degree three control point curve. Okay, and I'm just gonna start right here. Make sure that you double check your reference objects here. I think I'm gonna use just the main ones like near, uh, mid, maybe center also. Okay, so just double check if the reference objects are not working everything's uh, selected right there. Okay, so first point here on the revolution axis. The second point, I'm gonna press the shift key, right, so that I get a horizontal projection. Don't worry too much now about the exact shape that we're getting, okay, because we can just double check that later on on a second step. First of all, I'm just gonna concentrate on maybe getting the right uh, layout for my curves. So something like this, and something like that, okay? If you don't really like the shape that you have or you want to refine something, remember that by showing the control points, well, maybe let me let's change a little bit the color, use something a little bit darker. There you go, to have a better contrast. So if you show the control points, remember that you can always just adjust them to get the exact shape that you want to have, okay? As long as the second point is on the horizontal, okay, this is going to ensure that here the continuity when creating the revolution is perfect, okay? So something like this thing will be great there. What about here? Maybe my second point can be a little bit lower. Just like there. We can deactivate or disable the OSNAPs a little bit. You can also do that with the Alt key, remember, okay? But if you want to use Fine Adjust, the shapes, you can do so. There you go, by playing with the control points a little bit. If you want to further, let's say, uh, study the structure and the continuity of the curve, remember that with the, whoops, not here, sorry, right here, with the graph, curvature command, there you go. We can double check the smoothness, let's say the curvature of the curve that we're creating. Okay, so we have an almost constant curvature here, a small inflection point around here, another inflection point around here, and then all of a sudden my curvature just goes up in this area, okay? This is fine, this is okay. Uh, in more, let's say, uh, critical curves, this might be more of a, more of a useful uh, tool, okay? But right here, since the curve that we're getting is not really that uh, crucial, it's probably not 
a very important uh, tool, okay, or not uh, imperative, let's say, uh, tool. But if you, in case you want to double check that everything's fine, you can do so with this command, remember, curvature graph, okay. Um, I think this is, yeah, let me just maybe move this one a little bit, just a little bit to the right or to the left, okay. Remember, you can also use the gamble here, okay, to double check the position of your uh, of your points. Okay, there you go, something like this. And I'm quite happy with this one. I'm just going to revolve the curve then. Okay, so select curve. But if I go and call revolve, remember that revolve right here can be found on the surface creation set of tools here also. There you go, revolve. Since I pre-selected the curve, okay, the profile curve runner will ask me directly for the revolution axis. And I'm gonna pick any two points on this axis. Then click on uh, full circle, and there you go. That's my bulb, as you can see there. I'm just going to activate the ghosted mode here. There you go, so that we can see uh, real time display of the of the surface right here. And right here, I will start to concentrate now, maybe on the thread area. Okay, right before doing so. Before jumping onto the thread area, if I go to perspective and activate here again, ghosted, as you can see here, we have a thin wall surface. There is no thickness at all here. We can also double check this with the clipping plane command. Okay, clipping plane will let you create a live, let's say, uh, there you go. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> it will let you create a uh, a live, uh, yeah, clipping plane. Okay, that will let you cut and inspect your model. Okay, so as you can see here, there is no thickness at all. Okay, and I would really like to have some thickness here, especially if I want to create some realistic uh, renderings. Okay, so I'm just going to delete the clipping plane, and by calling the offset poly surface, here it is, offset surface. I'm just going to create uh, an offset of this surface that goes inwards. So I'm going to click on flip all. This goes in. Make sure that solid is set to yes. Okay. I don't really mind about the corner here because uh, it will be hidden actually in the model. And uh, I can just set distance to 0 0.25 uh, millimeters. I think that's going to be fine. So there we go. Now I have a shell, a bulb, okay, a glass bulb with a thickness of 0 0.25 millimeters, okay? That's just what I was uh, looking for, okay? I think that's gonna be fine. Maybe it's too much, actually, 0 0.25, but if I just make it too thin, maybe you won't be able to see it, okay? So I think that's going to be fine for our model. So let's carry on then. And let's create, as I was telling you, uh, a new layer, call it a uh, thread, okay? Jump onto it, thread, there you go. I'm just gonna use uh, lavender color, seeing that it will give me a quite good uh, contrast. And I will activate again the picture frame, jump onto the front viewport, here it is, and start creating my surfaces. I'm going to create first the main surface, okay, the main body, which is also a revolution. Again, quite simple tool, nothing really complex. I'm gonna start uh, Maybe here, second control point. Third, oops, sorry, going all the way down. Don't worry too much again for the exact position because I can double check that now with This tool showing the control points again. I can just select them in a bunch. One, two. Remember that by pressing the shift key, I can select various control points at once. Then adjust maybe a little bit with the gamble the position of these points, okay, so that they lie right here at the wall area. And I can just move this one maybe a little bit up to have a deeper area around here. Move this one again up so they have a rounded area here. 
And I think that I can create now maybe just again a revolution with revolve to get the uh, activate again the reference objects to get the main thread area. Okay, so far so good. I can only see the side protrusions here that will make up the uh, thread. Okay, let me just go back again here and uh, I think that I should be making one, two, three, four turns, right? Yeah, I think that's it, four turns. And I think that I will get the dimensions straight ahead from this uh, from this uh, image here. Okay, so um, I can maybe hide now the uh, glass bulb to have a better uh, cleaner viewport. Okay, and I will deactivate also the picture frame, right? You just have again a cleaner uh, working area here. Well, before doing that, let me just maybe uh, create a straight line. I wanted to create a straight line that defines the full length or the full height of the helix of the thread that I'm going to create. Okay, so I'm just going to go from here all the way down to here, right? Some 15 millimeters, something like that, right? There it is, that's my curve. I'm going to deactivate the gamble to have a better uh, overview again. I can maybe deactivate now picture frame and name perspective. Yeah, that's going to be my uh, helix, right? Okay, I can also maybe hide this auxiliary layer here so I can concentrate here. Right, I'm just gonna go and call the helix command here and uh, Rana will ask me for the start point this one here, for the end point, that one there, and then I can either define the pitch of the turns or the number of turns. I'm just going to click on turns, so I set it to four, then I will be using four turns, right, and I can define the radius of my helix, right, and as you can imagine, the radius should be the point itself, there we go, here, that lies on my base surface, okay? I can either do it that way, or, uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll just I'll just, uh, I'll just go and do that, okay? But actually, instead of using uh, a point that is exactly on the wall, okay, I'll use something that is slightly inwards, okay? You can just do it by, by eye, there we go. So my helix should be lying slightly inside my main surface. Why is it inside? Because I'm going to use a trick now to model the thread, right? I'll be creating a number of uh, sections here, okay? One section here, another section here, maybe here, here, here and there. Anyway, a number of sections scattered along, arrayed actually along the curve, okay? And then I will be creating a sweep one rail that goes from one point then to a constant section, and keeps that section all the way and goes again back to a single point. Because if I use a pipe, if I use something like a pipe, and I use a radius or a diameter actually of three maybe, well, that's maybe too much, but if I use something like a pipe, okay, you will see that the transition here is not really smooth. Okay, I'm just going to end with a fin I'm, I'm just going to finish with a, with a sharp hard corner, okay? And this is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to something a little bit uh, cleaner, I guess. So, as I was telling you, I'll be creating a number of sections here. I'm going to use the circle around curve. Where are you? Circle around curve. Here it is, circle around curve. I'm gonna click on the curve, and I'm gonna create a single section here with a diameter. I was using three before, and maybe that was too much. I think that maybe in front, with the picture frame on, I can define something that is, uh, yeah, I think that probably two, the diameter of two will be closer to what I'm expecting. Okay, then back to perspective. Right, I'm gonna use now the array on curve, array curve command here, and I'm going to array this curve along this path curve, okay? Number of items, uh, we'll probably have to experiment with this a little bit. I'm just going to start with 20. So I want to have a smooth transition between the first point and the first section 
Okay, that's going to be the most crucial uh, part. Okay, and the same thing all the way down. Right, so I'm just going to set it to uh, yeah something like 20 to get started. Okay, and then in orientation, runner will keep the orientation that I'm telling it to, to, to keep, right? So if I set it to no rotation, Reno keeps the original orientation, okay? That's not what I'm looking for. Control Z, undo. If I just repeat everything, whoops, sorry, repeat, object array, then the path curve, here it is. If I set it to free form, it will be quite okay in this case, okay, but actually the safest uh, one to use, the safest option to use will be using the road-like option, okay, because if we use road-like, Renault will keep the original orientation regarding the construction plane, okay, that's going to be the best one, the best option, if I'm not wrong, okay. As you can see here, the transition between the first section the point actually that we're going to use on the on the first real section it's maybe too too uh, too much okay so I'm not going to use 20 as I used before but I'm going to use probably something like 30 right so this is a bit shorter we could probably even push it up to uh, 40 or something like that. You will realize that I'm repeating some commands quite a lot. Remember that by right clicking on an empty area of the viewport you'll repeat the last command and if we right click on the command area we'll get the last 20 commands that we used. Okay so again I'm going to use a ray curve, again I'm going to select this section, press enter, pick the path curve, set this to maybe uh, yeah let's keep it to 40. Yeah much better then. Okay so I can remove now this one and I can remove this one, the first and the last, right? And then when creating a section, uh, uh, sweep one, sweep one surface now. When creating a sweep one surface now, I'll first of all pick the rail, this is going to be the rail. Then what about the cross section curves? I'm going to start with a point right here. So I'm going to click on point, pick the point. I want to go from that point to this section here. I want to go to the last section here and then back to a point. Right? Preform, OK, that's fine. You can double check here what I'm going to get. Click on OK. And there we go. And as you can see now, the intersection starts with a smooth plan here. So it goes all the way up, keeps the shape, and goes again to a smooth plan here. Right. Uh, there might be some things, a little bit, a couple of things to improve here. Okay. Mainly the maybe the, the size of the thread would be using something a little bit thicker, and also the position because maybe it's too inwards. Okay. Don't worry. Because actually, I haven't told you yet, but this should be quite easy. I'm just doing control set here, going back. If I activate record history, right click here and click on always record history and repeat the last steps, that will be array, right? Array curve, array this curve, on the path curve, 40 times, okay, and then sweep. One. This is going to be the rail, and from a point to this curve. Whoops, not sorry. Repeat again. Pick the rail from a point to this curve here, and keep the curve all the way down here. Then again to a point. Right. We'll be getting the same result. Okay, so far so good. But now if I go and move the original element here with the gamble a little bit to a side. Whoops, something didn't update. Okay, that might have been my fault. Okay. But if I move, yeah, I think that it should have, uh, it should have, uh, whoops, sorry, that was me. <laughs> 
uh, if I just, uh, I think that it should have, uh, should have uh, updated all the, all the, all the elements there. In any case, I might need to repeat the very last. Uh, but the other, yeah, okay, I know what's happening. I will have to just only repeat the uh, the sweep, okay? So all the sections are uh, are updating, but sweep one is not being updated automatically because it doesn't really know which sections I uh, selected, okay? But uh, anyway, in those cases in which you have to like fine adjust and fine tune some of the shapes that you're using, okay, like here, using the history is a good option, okay? Because it will save you to just go back and forth as we just did before, right? So I will only have to repeat. I guess the very last part, okay? So curve, then again, go from a point here to the section, keep the section, okay. Have to delete the last part, sorry, my bad. Pick the rail from a point. to this section, then keep the section, then back to a point. There it is. Now I think that the thread protrudes a nicer way. Okay, much better. And I will only have to use now uh, trim, okay, to just get rid of the parts that I won't be using. So I'm just gonna select the outer surface, click on trim, and then click on the interior bits of the thread that I want to remove, like this one here, probably that bit there, this one here, this one, okay, and so on. Don't worry if this happens, okay, this is quite okay. It means that uh, you just broke the relationship, the history relationship, okay, one of the, one of the, one of the objects, okay, but that shouldn't be very uh, important right now. I'm just gonna select all the curves. Since I won't be using them, I'm gonna use the select curve uh, command here, and maybe I hide everything, on send everything to auxiliary, okay, just to make sure that you only keep the surfaces. And I will need to also remove the this bit of the vertical surface, okay, so that we have a constant skin. So this is going to be my uh, trimming surface now. And I will have to just click on this vertical surface a couple of times until we just get the complete, there you go, thread. And I think that I should be able to just join everything <coughs> together in a single element, right? Okay, and if you want to add some more uh, realism, we can use a blend here to blend this edge. Actually, I'm going to create a regular fillet, okay, variable radius fillet here. Pick the full thread. Okay, to prevent you from having to click on all the edges that you want to, uh, that you want to uh, fillet, okay, remember that I'm just going to repeat the command, variable radius fillet. There's an option here called chain edges that will let you automatically chain all the edges. So if I set it to tangency and activate it, set it to yes here, then click on one of the edges. There you go, runner will automatically select all the edges that keep up with this continuity. Okay, so with a single click, we're done. And then what about the, what about the radius here? Uh, I'm just going to activate the preview just to check if one millimeter is too much or not. It might take a couple of seconds to update. Okay, and I think that maybe one is a little bit too much. I'm just going to lower it maybe uh, to 0.8, something like that, or 0.6. So I'm going to click on set all, lower it to something, to have something a little bit more, there you go, cleaner, I think. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. Click on enter to accept, and there you go. Now we have nice and clean blended thread. Okay, I'm just gonna, first of all, save my work, okay? Click on save and call it, uh, I don't know, it's on my webinars, 
I'm just gonna place today's date, 2016, point six point seven. okay, point bulb, just to make sure that we just got it there, okay, save, right, let's carry on then and continue, there we go, here we have the glass bulb, the threaded part, let's continue then maybe with the lower contact here, okay, this one should be quite easy, I guess, I'm just gonna call it uh, contact, give it a different color, maybe, yeah, this bright green, okay, and I'm just gonna create again a very simple revolution. I'm gonna activate again my auxiliary curve, just to make sure that I'm picking the origin of coordinates right there, my first point, my second point here, and my third point here. Okay, as long as the second point is on the horizontal, the continuity here will be smooth. So I can just go and again revolve this guy here around this axis, full circle, and there you go. Right, if I deactivate picture frame here and deactivate the auxiliary bit, I can have my contact floating there in space. If you want to just make this a little bit more realistic, because there's always a blob of solder here, you can just change and edit the control points here, but we won't focus in, in, in this part right now. And I'm just going to create the blended union here between these two guys. I'm going to do so by calling the blend surface command here, and we're going to go from here to here. If I set it to tangency, I'm going to have a nice and clean ceramic blend here between the two of them. Okay, of course I should be putting this on a different uh, layer, call it uh, I don't know, ceramic with a different color, again to keep everything clear and under control, something like this maybe. Then click here, right click here, on ceramic and change object layer. Okay, right. What about these transitions here? Okay, looks like it's the same surface actually, and uh, probably would have something. Would like to have something a little bit more realistic. Okay, I'm just going to show you a quick trick that will be first of all capping this. Uh, I'm just going to move here. I'm going to cap this uh, thin surface. Okay, clicking on the calling the cap command. Cap can be found here also on the solid uh, tools, right? Now we have a solid here, and if I just go and call again variable radius fillet here, and uh, just do a quick radius here with a really low value, something like 0 0.2, I'll have a more realistic transition between the two surfaces. Okay, like this tiny gap here. This can also be faked, okay, by using uh, some render artifacts, right? Some some post-processing uh, tools that we have in Rhino. But I think it's better if we just uh, model it from from scratch. I'm gonna call the same command here again. Cap on the upper uh, green part. Again, so it's solid, and I'm gonna call again variable radius fillet on this bit. Maybe 0 0.2 is too much here because this is quite thin, so I'm just gonna lower it to 0 0.1. There, something like that, to simulate that blob of solder. And I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing here again. So I'm going to uh, fill it again. Remember that if you see this kind of uh, artifacts, like these sharp edges here, this is because of the rendering mesh rendering mesh. You can improve this if you go to tools, options, then mesh and set it to smooth and slower. Click on preview. There you go, improved. And if you, need to, if you want to further improve it, you can go to custom and uh, just use some custom settings there. Okay, but this is going to be enough, I think. So again, variable radius fillet. Pick the blue one, 0 0.1. I'm not sure if this is too much. No, I think that it will be okay. Right, I'm gonna create a planar surface here that closes the thread on the lower part. So again, move on to thread. 
uh, cap it, no, planar surface. Here it is, pick this edge. Got it. I'm just gonna join this one and this one here now. So I have a single cap there. And again, variable radius fillet. This guy here. Zero point one is maybe too much. Sorry, too low. So if I use zero point fifteen, there we go. Just to make sure the transitions here are more realistic and have some kind some kind of uh, yeah breaking lines there. Okay, that's gonna give us a much more realistic rendering. Okay, let's focus then finally on the central segment. Okay, it's empty now, so I'm just gonna bring back my picture frame. There you go. And I will be using this as my general reference. Okay, I'm just gonna first create this central glass pylon. Again, a new layer, call it uh, glass, uh, I don't know, central. Right. I'm gonna use a different color, maybe orange, to make sure that uh, it's bright enough. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to activate again auxiliary to have this central line that will help me and guide me all the way down. So again, maybe a straight polyline that starts here, ends here, goes down, goes in a little bit, goes down all the way. Right. And I can now fillet these guys here. Maybe that's too much. So the radius should be probably something like 0 0.6. I'm guessing now, but I think that that will be, there we go, much better. So again, and again. Whoops, that's too much, actually too low. Maybe 0 0.2. There we go. Nice and clean. Right, uh, what else? I'm just going to create a revolution here. Start of revolve axis, end of revolve axis, full circle. There you go. Right. Now, to model this part, uh, this part is not completely uh, rounded, okay, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, a little bit uh, smashed on, on, on one of the sides. So I'm just going to start with a control point curve from here. Uh, I uh, think down here, here then, and then all the way down. And then finally go all the way down to here, right? Something like this. I'm going to revolve it full circle, yes, okay. And if I remove now the picture frame to have some more, a uh, better view around here, right, I can maybe just grab one of the, I mean, grab the surface here. And with the gamble itself, I can actually just smash it in one direction, right, so that later on when blending these two guys together with a blend surface, I have a single. Quite realistic, actually. Blend here. Depending on what I select here, I'll get in different results. I can activate the preview. There you go. To have something that kind of mimics, you know, this continuous blend that will create that central pylon here. Okay. It's probably something like this. I think that maybe this should be smoother. But anyway. That just by playing with the blend surface here, you can see that you can have different uh, different uh, shapes, right? Again, picture frame, bring it back. Okay, looks quite good actually. I kind of like it. There is a there is a. In, if I just go and check the original model, you can see here that there is kind of like a central gap here. Uh, we can just model it for for further further uh, let's say uh, details. Okay, to have something a little bit more. Uh, detailed. Uh, I'm just going to do this in a very uh, simple way by creating a circle here. 
I can deactivate or hide the picture frame. With this circle, I'm going to trim a hole around here, all the way down, okay? And in perspective, this is empty now, okay? If I go and call blend surface again, and create a blend from here to here, first of all, I will have to make sure that I activate not that everything lies oops sorry on that central node here to make sure that we're keeping the symmetry okay and if I press enter uh, this is quite ugly right but if I just move all the way down my settings here if I set this to tangency you will see that I can mimic that hole okay with a perfect continuity there. If I press the shift key, remember that I can keep the symmetry while editing those control points, okay, so I can further edit what's going on in there. So I can just move this down with shift so that we have a perfect blend here that is as smooth as I want. And I can join these two guys together now. Join. There we go. So that we have something like that. Right. Okay, what about the uh, contacts here on the filaments? I'm just going to create a new layer again called maybe filament or wire. Wires, yeah, I like wires. Reminds me of the TV show. <laughs> okay, wire. And uh, I think that black's going to be uh, probably a little bit more uh, bright because I'm going to work now again with the picture frame and I would like to have some nice contrast here. A very simple straight line. What time is it, by the way? It's a quarter to 11, okay? That's great, actually. That's fine. I think that we're just on time. I'm just gonna create a straight line here. That goes down. I can hide maybe the central part, okay? And uh, create a fillet here. Just to have some more realism, actually. I can just raise the value something like two. There you go, so I can see it okay, right there. Right, uh, what about that? If you remember that we had a, a, a kind of like a, like a, th there is like a turn here, okay, that mimics, that, that holds actually the, the, the filament. I'm just thinking about maybe one way of simulating that. If I just go and create a straight line here, Okay, with uh, I'm just improvising now, actually. By the way, so it might it might work, it might not work, and uh, but I just wanted to give it a try. So if I just create a helix, then again, and start here and finish here, and set the turns to one, and uh, do something like. Uh, this okay I should be having now a single let me just hide the picture frame a single turn here okay right and if I just turn this with rotate 3d ninety degrees up and then move it from this point to this point and delete this, I can simulate now that turn that goes all the way down, okay? Just keep in mind that this is not going to be constant, okay? So we will need to use match or something similar. Let me just show the control points maybe. This has too many control points. If I just go and call rebuild and use maybe a uh, Seven control points, maybe? Yeah, I think that's going to be quite fine. If I set it to seven then, and then click on uh, match, match curve, and I match this one to this one here, set it to tangency, maybe. I can perfectly simulate, I think, that blend here. I'm just going to set it to tangency. Okay, it goes down, follows that shape, and then goes all the way up again. 
and I can maybe create another uh, straight section with this orientation here and move it up here so I have again the same situation there and I can just blend again sorry match again this one to that one there we go with tangency something like that so I have that turn here that will let me completely simulate that bit if you think that uh, yeah this is maybe too uh, too, uh, too wide okay by playing with the control points okay we can just place this a little bit closer actually we could use scale 1d to make it a little bit thinner and to have the turn a little bit more defined okay I can join everything together now so there you go that bent wire okay I think that actually we should be uh, rotating this uh, up a little bit because the original uh, geometry is kind of like rotated right so I can use rotate uh, start at the origin of coordinates zero zero and just rotate it up a little bit like this something like that I can create a pipe now again as we just did before with the pipe command and the diameter will be a uh, half a millimeter maybe no that's that's too much so I'll repeat again the diameter will be 0 0.25 maybe that's that's too much even yeah something a little bit lower than uh, okay 0 0.05 which is a pretty thin wire actually but more realistic I guess right and then I can just mirror this I'm just gonna mirror the poly surface origin of coordinates all the way whoops sorry all the way down here okay again in front I will need to create also the other two support filaments do I still have it there yes these two this is going to be much easier I guess because these guys are uh, straight if I'm not wrong so I can go down here this is just a regular control point curve so don't worry something like this and then down right yeah yeah then just create a re regular pipe this one's going to be a little bit more uh, thicker I think so maybe 0 0.1 actually something a little bit thicker 0 0.25 one quarter of a millimeter remove the picture frame or hide the picture frame there it is whoops be careful because before creating the pipe the end point of my wire was just all the way off okay so whenever something like this happens you can either edit the control points or you can also use the set points command here that will let you smash all the points along one single coordinate the y coordinate of the axis of the world coordinate system there right okay so i can just smash it all the way down there we go and now it's on the flat plane that it should be so again pipe yeah that value was fine there we go what time is it 5 to 11 okay we might be some 5-10 minutes late but I think that's gonna be fine uh, mirror this again just a flat mirror okay what about the uh, what about the wire now okay, I'm just gonna move these two guys a little bit up Oh, 
Okay. And I will be creating a polyline that more or less goes through, sorry, the guys here, and then until the central point there. Right, something like this. Let me just check. Okay. Again, don't worry because by moving the control points, I can place this exactly through there. Okay, actually a little bit. Something like that. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. So I'm just going to fill it now this uh, corner here. And as you can imagine, I will be creating again a helix around that curve, okay, to simulate the filament. So again, fillet between this one and that one. Very good to have a more realistic uh, bend here. And I'm just going to mirror this now. Join everything together. There you go. So we are almost there. Now maybe just call again the helix command. Here it is, helix. I'm going to use the around curve option now. Pick the curve. How many turns? Uh, I'm just going to start with 50. Let's see what it, see what we get. Okay. So if I use something like 50, and use a very uh, whoops, let me activate this. Use a very low value here. There we go. My filament will be completely bent around there. Okay, the only problem I have is that maybe this is not completely touching the uh, the the contact there. Okay, there are usually a small plates here that just uh, weld everything together. Okay, but uh, I think that actually won't be visible if I just run a regular render. Okay, on the right scale. So don't worry too much about that. Okay, if you want to just uh, yeah, make sure that uh, that's happening okay. I'm just gonna maybe use some more uh, turns, say to 60, and uh, yeah, use something like this, I think. Fine, so it's inside now. If you want to just trim the part that will be out of the wire, we can just split by point command here. Remove this bit, there you go. So it starts from inside and goes all the way down here. If you want to find adjust yes, this one, actually, maybe we can just do it with a simple blend here, whatever. That's not really that important, I guess. And I think that we're almost uh, there. I'm just gonna clean up maybe a little bit uh, this here, right auxiliary. I'm gonna activate the glass bulb. Here it is, right? So, um, I was, uh, I mean, we, we, were, uh, we were planning to just do something regarding rendering also for this webinar, but actually, to be honest, it just takes uh, a lot of time, well, not a lot of time, but takes a few minutes to just wait for the full render, okay? So it doesn't really make, make much uh, sense, in my opinion, okay? Because having you here, uh, having you guys here live, uh, I mean, and, and making you wait for a render, maybe it's not uh, the wisest thing for us, okay? So we're going to prepare everything so that it can be uh, rendered, Okay, we're gonna apply some materials and uh, take a look. Uh, I'll take a look at the at the rendering settings with the Rhino render. Okay, and uh, I'll be showing you maybe later some uh, some of the results. Okay, so uh, before we start applying the materials, something that I really like to do before running render is cleaning up a little bit the uh, file. So I'm gonna select all curves with the select curve uh, command here, and I'm gonna send everything to auxiliary. Okay, so that I keep just the, whoops, sorry, before doing that, I forgot to actually create a pipe <laughs> on this uh, filament, okay? So uh, one last thing before we do that, that will be creating the pipe. And this time, I think that 0 0.1, maybe this is too much, actually. 
So again, 0 0.05. There you go, something like that. Here it is. So again, select the curves, hide the curves, or send them to the auxiliary layer so that we only keep the surfaces, okay? And uh, I'm gonna place this bulb in a more realistic uh, position, okay? So before doing that, I'm just gonna select everything with a group, okay? So we have a single element now here. And I'm just gonna create a copy of this place it on one side. I'm going to hide the original with hide so that oops, I'm just going to have, I'm having some problems, sorry, with uh, with my sticky keys. So I'm on a virtual machine, don't worry too much, I think that should be solved. There you go, and hide everything there. Right, uh, I'm going to reframe everything now. Oh, oh, just a second. So I think that uh, maybe my I might have to reopen the, the, the file because uh, I'm working on a virtual machine and I'm having some problems with the uh, control and alt keys, as you can see there. Okay. Oh, there it is. It's gone now, I think. Yeah. I'm back. I'm back. Right, so as I was telling you, I'm just going to rotate this a little bit on the um, XY plane to just break a little bit that uh, yeah orthogonal uh, setting. And then on the front viewport, I'm just going to do the same thing here. Okay, rotate it uh, down first of all, something like this. Place it around the central area, and then rotate it uh, again. like this from here, something like that, so that it lies on the, almost on the floor, lower it down a little bit, make sure to just make it, uh, there you go, not go beyond the, 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 the bottom, okay. And I'm gonna create, first of all, a ground plane, okay? There's a command called the uh, ground plane in Rhino, that will bring up this uh, panel here and that will let you create a, re a render time ground plane on the floor, okay? There is no material applied to it, but if I now run a render, that will be a plane on the XY plane there, okay? So I'm just going to activate it and on the material area here, if I click on default, you'll see that I can create or uh, actually uh, assign some of the uh, basic materials, okay? I'm gonna use a white mat there we go, that will be okay, I think. I can just keep the tab maybe, if you want, just to be able to review it later, all right? Then in perspective, I'm just gonna jump on here, and I'm gonna activate the rendered mode. So I can see that simulated plane that is infinite, actually, okay? Only that it's, it's just simulated here, right? And uh, on layers, right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start assigning materials here. I'm just going to use regular uh, materials in including Rhino. Okay, so for the glass bulb, I'm going to use a transparent glass. There you go. Okay. The same thing for my uh, central area. Okay. Click on the material button here, then in default, pick the glass one. There you go. It's already included on the file, so it should be easier for me to just find there. What else? Uh, the thread. It's going to be uh, silver, okay? Kind of stainless steel. I think that silver in the standard materials is the one that closest replicates the setting there. There you go. Same thing goes for lower contact. Set it to silver. And same thing goes for the filament or the wire, as I call it. Here it is. So all those wires will be used in silver. Okay. What else? Uh, yeah, the ceramic bit, it's going to have a plastic
black reflective material there. Okay, which is the thing that closest closely more closely replicates that uh, that shape there. Okay, I'm just gonna maybe work out a little bit the uh, position. If I just right click here twice, I'm gonna reset everything to standard just to make sure that we start with the standard uh, view. Okay, let me just turn it a little bit so that we can see all the details, right? Save, first of all. Okay, and uh, right click here on the render settings, and we'll just review some of the basic settings here to just get a, get a good render going on, okay? First of all, the viewport uh, resolution, okay? Uh, the more pixels you have, the slower it will go. That's uh, quite obvious, I think. What about the anti-alias? Again, this is going to uh, to affect the speed of rendering quite a lot. Okay, so if you're drafting and uh, so on, just use a lower value. Only only push it up if if it's a production rendering. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna start maybe with a really low value here, uh, just to shoot a, a sample render. Okay, but if I wanted a a, a full-on quality here, I'll just push up the pixels and push up the uh, anti-alias also. What about the environment? Uh, well, first of all, I'm just gonna run a render as it is now, and uh, still it will take a few, uh, well, one minute, okay? Maybe this is okay for reviewing the materials and so on, but it's not very realistic, okay? I will have, I would like to have a more realistic uh, illumination display and so on, okay? Uh, right, the best way to simulate a realistic uh, environment is of course with the environment option here, okay? This will be using an HDR file, okay? If I click on plus and then go to environments and click on the Rhino Studio, okay? With an HDR, that's a high dynamic range file, right? Uh, Rhino will simulate uh, a certain uh, situation, okay, a certain environment, and it will be used for both uh, the reflections, refraction, okay, as you can see here, Okay, and also for the illumination, if we activate the skylight option there. Okay, the only thing I'm gonna do here to make it a little bit more realistic is actually lowering down a little bit the multiplier on these two settings. Okay, right, click on OK, and if I go and activate skylight here and use the same environment, it's going to be a more realistic. There you go. Setting even, right? Rhino Studio, that's fine. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, another thing that you might want to check is actually the orientation of the environment. So with this value here, we can rotate it maybe 45 degrees. So this will let you find adjust and find control the reflections on the screen. There you go. So you might want to avoid those high reflections die right there, okay. And as you can see here, we're having now more realistic, uh, more realistic uh, preview, right? One last thing that I should be doing is breaking up this group actually, because I think that this is, an, uh, yeah, this is a shell, okay. It's not closed. I'm just gonna cap it to make sure that Rhino understands that it's solid, and I think that this is going to give us even better result at the end, okay? I'm just gonna select everything again and group it as we just did before. And what about uh, running a render now? I think that this one's going to take a few uh, minutes. Yeah, I think it's going to take us a few minutes, okay? So I'm not really sure if it's worth uh, waiting for the render to come, okay? But uh, with those exact settings, actually, I can show you the result that I got, okay, which is this one here. Should be coming up, there we go. This is the result that I got with those exact settings, okay, from my original file. Okay, so it's quite uh, realistic and it only took me a few uh, minutes to set up, okay. So I think that, uh, yeah, that that's actually quite, sorry, this one's mine, yeah. 
So it's uh, it's actually quite a quite a quite a quite a simple render cave okay, with some basic materials, but it's actually quite uh, quite realistic. If you want to further improve the quality, okay, add a second source of light, like a regular rectangular light. Okay. So for instance here, this one, let's place it up, rotate it a little bit. So it's in a more relaxed position. Okay, it's same thing with this one here. As you can see, you can use the gamble to just uh, place it in a realistic uh, position. Okay, and that's going to give you a much more uh, yeah realistic uh, set of uh, reflections and uh, so on. Okay. Uh, it's 10 past 11, okay, we're 10 minutes late, so I think that we can just uh, call it a day and uh, finish, okay. Uh, I'm just going to go, uh, do you guys have any uh, any any questions about the modeling? I think that Verena was uh, already uh, helping with uh, with the... Uh, with the uh, with the questions and so on, but if if you have some some if you have any questions about the yeah the the modeling strategy or some of the tools that I that I used, okay, just uh, let me know right in the questions area, and uh, I'll just try to uh, I'll just try to uh, to help you out. Okay, no, you got it clear. Everything's clear. Right, no questions. Good, actually, that's uh, <laughs> that's excellent. Then, so uh, thanks for attending. Okay, I hope that this was uh, helpful for you guys. Uh, remember that, uh, yeah, if if you need any help from us, okay, if you want to just uh, well add any sort of. Uh, uh, suggestion for a uh, new webinars or uh, if you have any 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 problem with the program okay you can let us know directly either at my personal email which is this one rodrigo at mcneil.com or at the regular support uh, email which is uh, tech.eu at uh, mcneil.com okay thanks for attending and uh, well hope to see you soon goodbye